Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Margaret and welcome to Purple Frog. Today, we are going to be going manga shopping at a Barnes & Noble, a Kino Kunia, and a new and used bookstore. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey everyone, so I just arrived. Here is the end cap full of new releases. I found I Want to Be a Wall Volume 2, which is one of the volumes that I was looking for, as well as In the Clear Moonlit Desk Volume 2, another volume that I was so excited to find. Moving on from that end cap, here is their table of volume ones. They have a really good variety of a lot of series. I really appreciate how they're always changing out and rotating the series over here. And then I found this new table, which I've never seen here before, and it was a buy one, get one half off, mix and match. This table exclusively, I asked the staff, it was only this table. Um, but yeah, they had some of the Shaman King omnibuses and just a whole bunch of other random volumes, like some random volumes of Wotokoi, Komi Can't Communicate, and like the last volume of Haikyuu. Very odd selection, but it was really cool to see that here because there's normally never deals at this location. Moving on to the normal manga section now, uh, this new series done by the man done by the same mangaka that did Chainsaw Man really caught my eye. I did not end up picking it up because I don't know what it's about. I'll have to look into it. If you guys enjoy this series, like let me know because it does look interesting and I really did enjoy Chainsaw Man. So it would be great if I could find another series done by the same mangaka besides like Fire Punch that I would enjoy. I'm really happy that lately Banana Fish has been getting a reprint since it's really nice to see uh, volumes in stock in stores. It's really great to see because it allows for a lot more people to collect the series. I also saw Barakumon. I don't know what this series is about either, but I have been seeing a lot of people adding it to their collection. I want to know if it's like a slice of life or what because it looks really cute and the artwork looks really nice. They also had some bleach manga, which is interesting since normally they don't have the singles, they always have like the box sets at this location. Uh, this series caught my eye in particular, uh, Bloody Mary. I've never heard of it before. The art looked really pretty though. The covers looked like really gorgeous. I assume it's about like a vampire series or something based on the title alone. You get to all of the blue series, blue period, blue lock, blue box, like, <laughs> you guys know. Um, I also was looking for Cheeky Brat Volume 5. Sadly, they only had Volumes 1 to 4. No Volume 5. So sad. I really am, am enjoying it. The series so far, it is really good. Highly recommend it. This series, Cat Gamer caught my eye. Really cute. I love cats. They're adorable. <laughs> I would like to check this series out at some point. It looks really cute and the art style looks absolutely amazing. I also saw Colorless, which has been, I believe, a new series that's coming out that I've been hearing a lot of people raving about, so I will definitely have to check it out at some point. They also had Dan -da -dan -da -dan, something like that, I think is how you say it, volume 2. The spines are looking really nice. And then here's their Demon Slayer section, which is getting smaller over time, I have noticed. Another thing that I've noticed is that recently their Dragon Ball selection has been expanding. They have a lot of the Bizbigs and the Dragon Ball Super singles as well as a box set. Of course, I had to stop and look at the Doctor Stone. You guys know how much I love this series. I highly recommend it. I can't believe it's done in Japanese and it's going to end soon. I also saw Eden Zero, which I believe is done by the same mangaka that did Fairy Tale. And moving on to the Fairy Tale manga, they had a pretty large selection of the box sets. Uh, as well as the singles, the side stories, and like the colossal editions. They also had a really large selection of Fire Force. I looked in the Food Wars section, sadly there were no like of the earlier on volumes that I was missing, and then they had a whole bunch of the Fruits Basket Collector's editions.
In the Hunter Hunter section, I was hoping to find volume 21, but sadly they only had 27 and then like in the volumes in the 30s, so I ended up not picking up any Hunter Hunter, sadly. Um, yeah, I saw I Hear the Sunspot. This volume was bothering me as it was severely like out of whack, so you know, I fixed it. I also saw Imakoi, which you guys have been telling me about. I definitely need to check that out. Here is the first volume of In the Clear Moonlit Dusk, and then they have a whole bunch of the Vizbig editions for Inuyasha, as well as these cool series over here, um, The Hellbound. I've never heard of it before, but the title seems cool. And then we have Hell's Paradise, which has a really small section, surprisingly. I don't know if it's just me, but each time I come here, it seems like their Jinji Ito section is getting smaller and smaller. Maybe it's because of the hardcover sale, but besides that, they had a decent amount of JoJo's and a whole bunch of Jujutsu Kaisen. Next to Kaiji, I saw Kaiji number 8. I already picked up volume 5, my grandfather picked it up for me since I was sick last week so I could not go to Barnes & Nobles, so thank you grandfather for that. <laughs> I find it really funny how Kirby has their own manga. I also saw the series Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible. It looked really interesting because I've been seeing on the table of volume ones, but I really have no idea what it's about. I think it might be a romance. Don't take my word for it though. I also saw Land of the Lustrous and Let's Play, which I believe is a webtoon series that recently got an English publication, which is cool. This series caught my eye, Magus in the Library. I've re been really wanting to get some library series, and this one looked like a really nice slice of life, kind of adventure fantasy series, so that was really cool to see. I also saw the Meisan Ikoku, I believe is how you say it, the Omnibuses, uh, or whatever, the Collector's Edition, I don't know what you call them. I saw Mal Volume 9, which is one of the volumes that I came looking for today, so of course I had to snag that. They also had quite a bit of Mashal, which is cool to see, and I want to start Mob Psycho. I really want to start it because I love the anime so much, so I would like to see how it compares to the manga. Here is their section of My Love Mix-Up. I was not looking for volume six since it is another volume that my grandfather got for me. Um, but I believe this series is completed at nine volumes in Japanese. Once again, do not take my word for it. Um, but I also saw they had a few volumes of Natsume's Book of Friends and Nana. I love Requiem of the Rose King, so I'm always happy to see it, especially when they have a decent amount like they did at this location in stores, which is amazing. I saw just so many series, Sayonara Football, which I believe is a series about soccer, and a whole bunch of Seraph of the End and Servamp. This series, Silver Spoon, looked really interesting. It looked like it had a really unique concept of like a farm life type of a thing. It looked very relaxing and countryside. I saw a couple volumes of Slam Dunk, which were actually volumes that I returned a few weeks ago. So that was funny to see in stores. I also saw the Sweat and Soap box set. The Sweetness and Lightning series looks really cute. That girl looks like a chipmunk in human form. I also saw Takane and Hana, I believe is how you say the name. I'm not a big fan of that series since I don't really like age gaps, but I also saw some well, a whole bunch of Tokyo Ghoul. I have been looking into getting this series. I've been trying to find some deals. It's hard to find deals because I just want to get it for super cheap since it is a popular series and it is like longer, so I don't want to pay too much for it. There is the Tokyo Avengers omnibuses. I'm not sure if I plan on c continuing to collect the series in English or not. I like I don't know. I was looking for Yakuza Fiancé Volume 2. Sadly, I could not find it. I was so heartbroken. I love Yakuza Fiancé. There was also some Yotsuba, a whole bunch of Yona of the Dawn, and just so much more. After grabbing some of the new releases that I found, I checked out and headed to the next location. Okay, everyone.
everyone, we just arrived at the Kinokuniya and I am so beyond excited. I'm hoping to find a few volumes that I could not find at the previous location, uh, like given volume seven, like that is the big one here. Silver Spoon once again caught my eye. I was looking for Slam Dunk, could not find any volumes besides volume one. I'm also looking for Yu Yu Hakusho. Hopefully I can find some volumes that I am missing, but yeah. I Am an Inept Villainess is a great series. It's a really funny kind of body swap, isekai, fantasy, romance type of a series. It's really good, highly recommend it. They had a whole bunch of Vinland Saga, which is really interesting to see. They had no Yakuza lover, fian no Yakuza fiance, excuse me, a volume two. But then again, Kino Kunya never puts out uh, things early like Barnes and Noble does. So yeah. They only had one volume one of Yu Yu Hakusho, so that was pretty sad and disappointing. It was not looking good. It was not looking good. There was not too much that at least I was looking for. Here is their wall of some kind of Japanese manga and magazine series. This series has been really popular lately, and I hope we get an English adaptation soon. They also had a little end cap full of Mario manga, which is very odd. Here is the TGCF end cap. I did not end up picking up any more buttons. It was a very difficult decision but I thought it was best for my wallet. <laughs> it was very interesting to see how they had so much Blue Lock merchandise and fan books and guidebooks and a whole bunch of the manga in the in Japanese. So I guess it's a pretty popular series in Japan right now, which was really interesting to me. But you know, I always love a good sports series, so always happy when a sports series is popular. I was just shocked at the sheer amount of Banana Fish volumes, like this is a lot. And there was even more on the other shelf, and I it was just a lot. So I mean, it's great to see how widely available it is now uh, for a lot of people that have been wanting to collect the series. Here is the Hunter Hunter section where I found volume 21, which is a volume that I was missing. So of course I picked that one up. They had a little bit of the Orient manga. They had a decent amount of Pandora Hearts and Orin High School Host Club, as well as the Promised Neverland. They also had some Saint Young Men and Rose of Versailles. Uh, they had Mao Manga and a whole bunch of Mashal, which I have been hearing a lot of good things about. I hope it's getting anime. I think it probably already has one or it's getting one. I'm just way behind on am anime news. Uh, up here is their kind of wall of new releases. So they had a whole bunch of Kaiju number eight. I was looking for Given Volume 7 here. This is where I would find it if I could find it. Um, yeah it was not looking good like at all i just did not see it on this wall and it was heartbreaking because you know then again i'm not in too big of a rush to get it since like a new given volume comes out in english like once every year uh then i saw a 60 dollar cat plushie in a box it was interesting to say the least They also had this giant wall uh, of like on a pillar of a whole bunch of Blue Period merchandise, which was a little bit odd to me, but I thought it was cool nonetheless. Here is some of their Kimetsu no Yaiba merchandise, and I saw some Code Geass Ken badges. I would have gotten these, sadly, if they were just a little too plain for my tastes. They had a whole bunch of Natsume Gijincho uh, Ken badges, which is really cool to see, and of course a whole bunch of Spy Family, since it's really popular. Here are some more series like Case Study of Anitas and just a lot of other different series' merchandise. Uh, they also had their whole like little build corner with all of their models and paints and whatnot, which is always really cool to see. They had a whole bunch of plushies and this table full of this merchandise from this series I have never heard of that looks really cute. If you guys enjoy this series or know what it is, let me know because it looks adorable. I find it really nice how this location has a table dedicated to horror manga in both English and Japanese and this Jinji Ito box set really caught my eye because that's really cool. I have never seen anything like that and I think it'd be really cool if we get something like that in English. 
Of course, this Kinokuniya has a giant Kirby section and cat hat section. I have all like all of these for my dogs. They're hilarious. After popping upstairs to see if there has been any new additions since the last time I was here, this was like a little Valhalla, I don't know what it was, maybe like a little coin pouch or something. It looked really cute though, it looked really stinking cute. Um, but yeah, they had some Tokyo Ghoul merchandise, Skate the Infinity. It was just a lot less organized and just kind of scattered around the stores, so it was a little bit harder to find uh, and see what they had since like there was like a little bit here and a little bit there. But I did see one of my favorite things of all times. I highly recommend it if you guys see these here. And it is the clamp can badges. They are fantastic works of art and they are pretty good in like in terms of affordability for what they are in my opinion. They had a whole bunch just like like literally every inch of up here was just covered in merchandise. Like literally the whole walls were like floor to ceiling it almost feel, felt like. I saw this prize figure here, which looked really nice for a prize figure. Once again, I don't know what show she is from, but I really like the frame and the unique pose. I think it looks really cool. After looking at the art books, I checked out with my goods and headed to the last store. Okay guys, we just arrived at the new and used bookstore. First, I'm looking in their comic section, which does have some manga sprinkled about, like Case Closed, and I mean, it's just kind of hidden, so you really have to look closely. Um, I saw some old Tokyo Pop series, and I also saw Full Moon, which I hear is a really good, good like classic shoujo beat series. They had some of the original Tokyo Pop fruits basket, which is really cool. Had a whole bunch of Heartstopper, which is not manga. Yeah, they also fun. had some High School Debut, Kare Kano, as well as Kamikaze Kaite, Kaito Jin, I believe is the title of it. And just a whole bunch of kind of unheard of Tokyo Pop series that at least I have never heard of. Um, this series caught my eye as it is a Shoujo Beat series that I have never heard of. I mean, yeah, they just had so much hidden stuff here. This is better than it normally is. I saw Mixed Vegetables Volume 4, which I was considering getting, but... I don't know if I'll shoot you guys later on, but it was really beat up. Like the spider was falling apart and it was like taped together. So I did not end up getting it, but I saw some more Shoujo Beat series like Ultiman, Skip Beats, and just a whole bunch of series. They had uh, both new and used in this section. Uh, they also had the Shaman King Omnibuses and some Boruto manga. Yeah, they just had a really wide selection and it really varies um, from day to day because they just kind of get a random selection every single time I come here, which is always fun. This series is done by Dark Horse, which I've never heard of, which is an interesting series to say the least. Ultramaniac, uh, Vampire Knight, they had some Yu-Gi-Oh! and some Yakitake Japan, I believe is how you say it. Very interesting premise, let's just say. Okay guys, so we just arrived in the actual manga section, which I'm not even joking, is a floor to ceiling manga like bookshelf it is crazy um i saw a volume of food wars that i was missing one of the earlier volumes which is volume 11 uh and it was 6.95 i don't know why it was like 30 percent off but i snagged that because it is like brand new um this once again is an assortment of new and used manga in this section as well they just had so many series uh they had one random volume of hunter hunter a whole bunch of love hina a volume of loveless uh meisan ikoku like just so many random series, like so many series that like many, it's like very popular and then a whole bunch of series that's kind of like unheard of as well. So this is a really good place to go if you wanna discover some kind of hidden gems in my opinion, since they do have pretty good prices, especially in their used series. I mean, it is just crazy how much manga they have here. It is literally floor to ceiling, like it is insane. Uh, they had some Snow White with the red hair and this So Cute It Hurts series, which uh, looked really adorable. Shoujo Beat series that I've not really heard much about. They had just so many random series that I've never really heard of. Just like a really wide selection. They had some Tokyo Ghoul manga as well as Tokyo Revengers, some Ultraman, Undead Unluck. 
Toriko, which is interesting to see. And then I saw Mixed Vegetables Volume 1. After this, I checked out and headed home. Okay, everyone, so I just got back home from shopping, so let's get into the haul. Starting off with Barnes & Nobles. Starting off, I picked up I Want to Be a Wall Volume 2. I'm really excited to continue the series. I really enjoyed Volume 1. Uh, so yes, this is a really unique series. It is about an asexual woman who marries a gay man and their kind of friendship dynamic and how they navigate uh, their marriage. It's really funny. I really enjoy it so far. Highly recommend. The next series I picked up is one that I'm really excited about and that is In the Clear Moonlit Dusk Volume 2. I was so excited that I was finally able to get my hands on this as I've been seeing a lot of people finding it at their stores and it just took me forever to find it, but I finally found it. Um, I read volume two online a while ago before we have even got an English release and I really enjoyed it. So I'm excited that I have volume two, such beautiful artwork. It is a high school romance between this girl and this boy. And it's really fun because the girl or the female lead has a more masculine appearance and kind of how she navigates life with that and like the misconceptions. And yeah, it's really good. I really enjoy it. It's very good. The artwork is literally amazing. Highly recommend if you guys really like uh, romance, like high school romances, this is definitely a one for you. The last one of manga that I picked up at the Barnes & Noble was Mao Volume 9. I mean, I don't really know how to explain this. It is done by the same mangaka, Rumiko Takahashi, that's at Inuyasha. So it is very similar to Inuyasha, except this is about like exorcists and like spirits or curses or whatever. And it takes place in the 1920s in Japan. So it's really cool, very unique time setting as not many things take place in the early 20th century Japan. So yeah, I've been really enjoying it so far. So I decided to pick up the next volume. Now moving on to the items that I picked up at the Kinokuniya. Starting off, I picked up three different colors of some mild liners. I really enjoyed these. Uh, my blue one was running out and I did, and I don't have these two colors. So. Once again, at this location, I didn't really have anything that I was really looking for in terms of manga, but uh, they did have volume 21 of Hunter x Hunter, so I picked it up. As you guys can see, I only have one to 20. Um, with the series, I'm picking it up slowly and I'm just gonna be starting to pick up the next volume in stores. I have not been seeing 21, so when I saw 21, I picked it up. Next, I'm just gonna be looking for 22, not avidly or anything, but if I see it, then I'll get it. But yeah, we have going on the cover here, and this is like the Chimera Ant arc, clearly. I mean, like you have Meruom on the back, and you have this giant ant on the front. Okay, now moving on to what I got uh, at the New and Used Bookstore of Powell's. Starting off, I picked up Food Wars Volume 11. Once again, another series that I'm just kind of collecting slowly but surely, similar to Hunter x Hunter. I was so surprised to see this there because it is like basically new, like brand new, and it was $6.95. I don't know why it was like 30% off, but it was. Um, so I grabbed it. They did have some other volumes there that were 30% off as well uh, from Food Wars, but I decided just to get one uh, since this is like an earlier volume that I needed and I don't really have uh, enough in my opinion to start getting like the later volumes so I just picked up this volume and called it a day. <laughs> the last volume that I got and I think undoubtedly the one that I am most excited for and that is Mixed Vegetables Volume 1. I have almost the entirety of the series in my collection. It is an eight volume series about cooking, clearly, yeah. And um, I was missing volumes one and volume four. They did have volume four there but it was severely beat up and it was five dollars and like the spine was falling apart, it was taped together. So I did not really consider that to be worth $5 in my opinion. I can just find it for a better deal and, and a better condition. Um, but yeah, this was $5.95. It is like in brand new condition. The only thing is that it is very yellowed, but like I don't really mind since a lot of my mixed vegetable volumes that I have already are like ex library condition volumes like used. So this will fit right on in and I'm just so excited that I can finally start the series since I've been really wanting to start it, but I just haven't had volume one. So here's everything that I got today. I had a lot of fun shopping and I found a lot of good volumes that I've been missing. So I'm so excited to read all of these. Thank you everyone so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to comment, rate, like, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.